This video looks at the division of complex numbers. So the previous video focused on multiplication of complex numbers and demonstrated that this was easiest if you first put the numbers in modulus argument form. We're now going to develop that theme by looking at division. Now students will find that in general using modulus argument forms is much more common than writing a complex number as a real plus imaginary part and that's because the algebra of multiplication and division are so much easier. And they will also note that modulus argument or gain and phase often link directly to real engineering behaviours so they're quite useful to represent a complex number that way rather than as real plus imaginary. So just a reminder of some key results. If you have a complex number a plus jb, the modulus is the root of a squared plus b squared. If you put that same complex number in the denominator, then the modulus of 1 over a plus jb is 1 over the square root of a squared plus b squared. If you look at the phase of a plus jb, or the argument, you get tan to the minus 1b over a. If you look at the phase of the same complex number when it's in the denominator, you get a minus. OK, now just a warning there at the bottom. Remember, with arguments, you do need to be a bit careful with the quadrant in general. Now, inverses therefore have inverse gains and they have phases of equal magnitude but opposite signs. So that's summarised here. The modulus of z times the modulus of 1 over z must give you 1 and the argument of z is minus the argument of 1 over z. Those results were covered in an earlier video. So now let's look at the modulus of a quotient. We want to divide one complex number by another and compare the modulus of the quotient to the moduli of the original complex numbers. So here's the complex numbers we're going to deal with. We've got w equals a plus jb and z equals c plus jd. Now I could do, I'll just write one, the modulus of w is clearly the square root of a squared plus b squared and you can do the modulus of z by inspection. But what we're interested in is what's the modulus of w over z? And I've written w over z here. You can see it's a plus jb divided by c plus jd. Now what we covered earlier is often the first thing you can do is you can multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator and that's what we've done here. You'll see we've multiplied top and bottom by C minus JD. If I then expand out these brackets and see what I get, you'll see in the numerator I get AC plus BD plus J into BC minus AD and in the denominator I get this term here C squared plus D squared which is a positive real. What I want to do next is calculate the modulus of w over z. So that's what I've written here. I want the modulus of w over z. So I'm going to do the square root of real part squared plus imaginary part squared. Now, because the denominator is already real and positive, I don't need to worry about that. So you'll see I've done ac plus bd squared plus bc minus ad squared and stuck that under a square root. Now, what I've done to get to the next step is I've simply expanded out the brackets. So the AC plus BD all squared, I've expanded it out, and the BC minus AD all squared, I've expanded that out. And you end up with this term here, A squared C squared plus B squared D squared plus B squared C squared plus A squared D squared. Now, what I can do is I can show that that is equivalent to this expression here. A squared plus B squared in brackets times C squared plus d squared. You can do that yourself in slower time if you don't believe me. But why is that useful? Because you'll notice I've got a c squared plus d squared in the denominator and a c squared plus d squared in the numerator, albeit the numerator term is under a square root. And therefore, I get this. The modulus of w over z is the square root of a squared plus b squared over c squared plus d squared and you'll find that this is identically equal to the modulus of w divided by the modulus of z because the modulus of w was the square root of a squared plus b squared and the modulus of z was the square root of c squared plus d squared so there's the result the modulus of the quotient is the quotient of the moduli what about the phase of a quotient? So I want to divide 
two complex numbers and compare the phase of the quotient to the phases of the original complex numbers. So again, here's my original complex numbers, W, A plus J, B, Z, C plus J, D. Then I'm going to divide them. So you see, that's what I've done here. W over Z equals A plus J, B over C plus J, D. Now this is the same as the previous page. So I've simply written out what this complex number comes to be if I make the denominator real. What about finding the phase then? Right, first of all, the phase of W is 10 to the minus 1 b over a, the phase of z is 10 to the minus 1 of d over c, and so I can write that the phase of z minus the phase, sorry, the phase of w minus the phase of z is 10 to the minus 1 b over a minus 10 to the minus 1 of d over c. And I want to compare this to the phase of w over z, which is from this formula here, 10 to the minus 1 bc minus ad over AC plus BD. And that clearly has come from these numbers up here in W over Z. Now, exactly as in the previous video, I can use my inverse tan addition rule to add these two together. So I get 10 to the minus 1 of B over A minus 10 to the minus 1 of D over C can be written as 10 to the minus 1 B over A minus D over C all over 1 plus B over A times d over c, I multiply throughout by ac, and I get this, 10 to the minus 1 bc minus ad over ac plus bd. And what do you notice? It's the same as this result over here. So what you've got is the argument of w minus the argument of z is the same as the argument of w over z. So the difference in the phases is the phase of the quotient. So here's our summary. If two complex numbers are divided, the modulus of the quotient is the quotient of the moduli. And that's written in this expression here. So the modulus of z over w is the same as the modulus of z divided by the modulus of w. So a very powerful result for doing division. Similarly, the phase of z over w is given by the phase of z minus the phase of W. And hopefully you'll agree these results are very powerful and therefore simple to use. Again a reminder, there are alternative proofs that you will see in textbooks or indeed in lectures should you want to look at them. And just a reminder of what we did in the previous video, we said if you multiplied complex numbers you had these two rules. The modulus of ZW is mod Z times mod W and the argument of ZW is arg Z plus arg W. And you'll see there's sort of a symmetry between these, pair, these results, which is very useful. So now what we're going to do is apply these with some examples. So first, a simple example. You see I've got a complex number X. I've written it in Cartesian form, but really it's the modulus argument form I want. Root 2 pi by 4. And similarly for Y, I've got 1 arg minus pi by 3. Now I want to divide them. I want to do x divided by y. So how do I do it? Well, first of all, I take the modulus of x and I divide by the modulus of y. So root 2 divided by 1 gives me root 2. In order to find the phase of x over y, I take pi by 4 and I subtract the phase of y, which is minus pi by 3. So you see I end up with pi by 4 plus pi by 3. And hopefully you agree that was very simple. But we'll do a number of examples next to demonstrate the point. So here you'll see we've given three complex numbers in the yellow box. And what we want you to do is find a number of different products and quotients. So first of all, w over x. So if I want to know what's the modulus of z, I do the modulus of w, which is 1, divided by the modulus of x, which is root 2. Simple as that. Just write it down. If I want to know the phase of z, I take the modulus of w, which is 5 pi by 6, and I subtract the modulus of x, which is pi by 4. Problem done. What about x, y over w? Well, I take the modulus of x, which is root 2, the modulus of y, which is 2, 
divide by the modulus of w, which is 1. And for the argument, I take the argument of x, which is pi by 4. I add the argument of y, because those two are multiplied, plus pi by 3. And I subtract the argument of w, because that's divided. What about wx squared over y? Well, the modulus of w is 1. The modulus of x is root 2, but I've got an x squared, so I get a root 2 squared, which gives me 2. And then I divide by the modulus of y, which is 2. Now you'll see 2 over 2, that's going to reduce to 1. What about the arguments? The argument of w is 5 pi by 6. I've got two x's, so I get 2 pi by 4. And I subtract the argument of y. Now you'll see here, I can make the expressions really quite nasty. And if you had to do these in Cartesian form, that is carrying real and imaginary numbers, you really would not want to do it, especially this one down at the bottom. You'd say, how long are you going to give me, an hour or more? OK, you just wouldn't want to do it. But in modulus argument form, it's straightforward. So we'll do z first. I've got y to the 4, so I end up with a modulus of 2 to the 4 from the y. The modulus of x is root 2. So I just divide. What about the phase? I get 4 times the phase of y, so 4 pi over 3, minus the phase of x, so minus pi by 4. What about z then? This expression is beginning to look nasty, but you'll see I just write things down. I don't have to even think nothing hard. Modulus of w is 1. Modulus of y is 2, but I've got 3 of them, so 2 cubed. The modulus of v is 2 v squared, so I get 2 squared. The modulus of x is root 2. So there's the modulus of the result. You can simplify it if you want. What about the phase? Phase of w, 5 pi by 6. Phase of y is pi by 3, but I've got 3 of them, so I end up with plus pi. The phase of v is minus pi by 2, and I've got 2 of them, so that's minus pi, but I'm going to have to subtract it because it's in the denominator, so I end up with a plus pi. The phase of x is pi by 4, so I've got minus pi by 4, because that's in the denominator. And finally, let's look at z. So z, we have a w cubed, so that gives me a 1 cubed in the modulus, times an x, which is a root 2. We've now got u, which has a modulus of root 2, v, which has a modulus of 2, and y has a modulus of 2, but there's two of them so 2 squared. So you can see I can just write down the expression for the modulus very, very easily. What about the phase? I've got w cubed, 3 of them, so that's 15 pi over 6. I've got an x, so that's plus pi by 4. And now all the others, I'll put a minus here to emphasize the fact that they're in the denominator and some brackets, so we don't make a silly mistake. So what was the phase of u? It was minus pi by 4. What was the phase of v? It was minus pi by 2. And we had two y's, so we get plus 2 pi by 3. So there's the expression for your phase. So some conclusions. We've shown that the division of complex numbers is simple when you do it in the modulus argument form. So the quotient of the moduli is the modulus of the quotient. And that's this rule here. And the difference of the arguments is the argument of the quotient, and that's this argument here. You can combine those with the simple rules for multiplication, which we did in the previous video, and you find you can do very rapid multiplication division of quite complex expressions, as we showed on the previous page.